Mini golf designer. A couple of married entrepreneurs have decided to start a mini golf business, and we, the player, have been asked to submit projects. So each pl each player will prepare a project for a mini golf, and the best one will be hired. Also, will win the game in in game terms. The game is for one to five players, so you can play solitaire. And yes, I also played it that way. And it plays very similar to multiplayer. You don't have to worry about a complicated AI, because there isn't one at all. Oh, you can play multiplayer. Also, you have two different versions of the game, the regular game and the advanced game. In the regular game, you will score certain categories. In the advanced game, you will commit to score better than the other players in certain categories. So, not only will you score the categories, but then you'll check first, second, third, and so on for the opportunity of scoring extra points or losing points if you committed to excel in a category and you did not. So, we said that there's going to be two, uh, two people that are considering hiring us. Uh, they want to see our projects. So, at the beginning of each game, you will draw a card from this deck and a card from this deck, indicating the two people that we have to please. And each wants a different thing. And so, that is simply a way of giving you different categories to score uh, different things. We have a board there, which is used mainly to scoring at the end of the game, to keep track of score, but also as a reminder of all the categories that you will score. As you can see, there's quite quite a few of them. And, uh, well, that's, that's that's the game. That's part of the fun, is to try to score in so many categories. And in many games these days, uh, we have that, that you score a lot of different things, so that it's not obvious, say, who is doing better in this or that situation. Then we have these three uh, pieces of cardboard here that are used to organize the pieces and to decide which uh, elements you will get. Very strong echoes of King Domino here. That means each round the players will uh, choose in order from left to right from the from the display of the previous round. So this round yellow goes first and say yellow wants to take that piece and we'll see what that does and blue wants to take that piece and so that's that's what happens. They take their pieces, they place them on their board. You can also choose to pass it if you don't want any of those pieces then you're sitting on the bench there. So whatever the situation then you simply switch the order here you pick up this ginormous bag full of tiles a lot of tiles and you draw the tiles so from the next round uh, the tiles are numbered and that tells you the order in which they will be placed on the board ascending order so one three and nine in this example these are discarded and so that's uh, that's the idea after we have placed the tiles from the previous round now again we go and select the new ones and that's and we repeat that procedure that just tells us how we how we get our tiles what we do with them that's that's the fun first you're going to start with a project an outline of your of your mini golf course so that always will include a piece like that that is your starting piece that's where how you have to where you have to start building from and there is quite a few of them. You will receive you will receive a hand of them at the beginning. You will choose one. Some are harder, some are easier, but they're worth different amounts of points. So if you commit to a tough one, that is the that is the balance. Some may have water elements, water features in them. You will use these tiles to represent them. You simply it simply means that you cannot build there. So these water tiles will make your mini golf course look nicer and also will let us remind that you're not supposed to build there. And right now, I had started building one. Where is it? Oh, there it is. There it is. I started building one. Um, and I'll finish. And after I'm done with filming this segment, I'll play the game solo. And so here's what I have so far. Starting from my starting from my golf course there, from my from my starting tile. Now the first tile that you get needs to be adjacent to your starting thing. The following ones need to be adjacent to something that you had already in play previously, but 
super important, different from a lot of other, uh, other lane tile games, you can count as touching only a corner as adjacent. That would be a legal placement that is not something that you have in a lot of other games of this of this kind. Now, you are trying to form, of course, uh, your mini golf course. You have a set of flags, as you can see here, and they used to mark your different holes, and you can place them th there as a reminder. During the game, I could switch them, I can move them around. They only matter really at the end of the game, uh, and they're mainly a visual aid. So as you can see also little flags there that indicate the difficulty of each hole. For example, this one has a difficulty of 3 and 2 total is 5. This one will have a difficulty of 1, 2, 3. Why is that important? Because each player has a player aid like this one, a display like this one, and a set of 36 cubes. And as you create new holes, you're going to add cubes to indicate the difficulty. Now you see there is a green range here that is used to mark difficulty between 3 and 5. Because that is the perfect level of challenge that people want. Not too easy, not too hard. If your hole only has difficulty of 2, well that is not great. If it's uh, more than 5, again, people are not going to enjoy. So as much as possible you want your holes to be between three and five and that's why uh, see as, as I play I add a flag there that means one and I keep track of the difficulty as as I go here number two three and that's why I place three cubes there now since you have nine holes in your building and the ideal average is four you have start with 36 cubes and you're trying to place those exactly. You're trying to place a total number of cubes of the difficulty as close as possible to 36. So if one is very long, then you're gonna try to make another one that is very easy. At the end of the game, you will lose points for cubes that you're gonna assign. If you need extra cubes to mark your actual difficulty on the board, there are black cubes that you will place there. Again, not ideal because you exceed that and you will lose points for that. So you're trying to place 36 difficulty cubes exactly reconciling, uh, representing, representing your thing. Then other things that are important, people enjoy after done with one hole to start with another one exactly and so you're also trying to place the beginning of a hole next to the end of the other. Then remember there are things that our our entrepreneurs want so for example Mr. Linear likes straight holes in Dali, Mrs. Bloom likes flower beds and in general the misses like to see certain features on the uh, on, on the project and the misters like to see certain patterns on the in the design of the different holes themselves. So those are the things to keep in mind. Again, the game is extremely simple because it's so well, if you're playing Domino especially, then you're familiar with that mechanic there of from time to time waiting for the right piece, jumping onto the opportunity. And then you're building your golf, your, golf, your mini golf course. And then there's a lot of stuff that you have to take into account. And this is again the, the player aid that reminds us of the things you're trying to score. Design a popular mini golf. Each person showing on your mini golf is one point. So as you can see, some of the art, which looks pretty pleasant, also has game functions. And yes, you are gonna go for a lot of people, but of course, if you neglect the other stuff, you're that's not gonna work. Now, the game is over when everybody drops out of the game. Remember, you can pass sitting on the bench if you don't want a certain piece, but that doesn't mean you're out of the game. You officially declare that you're out of the game. When you do so, then, if other players are still playing, when it is your turn, you'll collect a tile every turn and you will place it face down next to your play area. So that puts uh, an incentive to the players to get done quickly because at the end of the game, each style that you collected when you pass, when you dropped out of the game and other people didn't, each such, such style is worth three points, not shabby. Again, whatever satisfies the two clients will give you points. 
get into uh, each line in the, that display showed you, which within three and five scores you two points, each cube that you haven't placed or each cube you needed to add at the end is one point that you lose. You're trying to fit the original outline as best as you can with one point lost if you leave an area blank and minus three points if you exceed the bound the boundaries of the of the outline. Again, making a loop gives you two points for each end of a hole that is next to the beginning of the next, and that also applies for hole number one, starting next to the uh, to the starting tile and the last one ending at the end of that tile and then you can you can pause and read those various penalties for uh, making your overall mini golf course looking silly and this is the general idea again there's an advanced version in which basically you're committing to score better than anybody on those categories but this is still the general idea get one tile each turn unless you decide to pass Build your mini golf course with all of those things in mind. The game ends when everybody dropped out of the game and at the point you score points and the player with the most points wins the game. I like tiling games and I like this one also. I think it's a worthy addition to that family of games that has been so popular. At least since Carcassonne, that has been the one that I believe brought the joy of that style of game to the masses and actually that introduce so many so many people to hobby gaming. Mini Golf Designer is more reminiscent of King Domino than Carcassonne, but but again that's that's the lineage. And King Domino of course is in, in the way the tiles are assigned. Nothing wrong with that. We have games that borrow game mechanics from one another all the time and I think that that contributes to making the hobby better. And if you like one thing there is something that uses a similar thing then you're more likely to like it. The different thing here that of course drives the game in a whole uh, different direction, in my opinion, is the complexity of the multi-layer elements of the scoring, which makes the game not harder to play than Kingdom, you know, but harder to play well, harder, harder to score, because there's so many things that you have to take into account as you're playing the game. Of course, strategy is counted at the end, but you'll be working toward that the whole time. And yet, I think the game does a really good job of integrating all of these different elements of the scoring with the theme. And so the topic uh, really helps you remember all that you're trying to do. It really makes sense that you want an ideal golf course to have that loop there. Uh, depending on the card that you choose at the beginning, the outline is going to be more or less elaborate. And that's, uh, and that's interesting that the, 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 the different segments need to be not too long, not too short, not too hard, not too easy. That's, that's pretty good. That's, again, it's very intuitive. I think it's remarkable. There are the games where at the end you go through the laundry list of all the scoring points, the, 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 the salad point recipe. Uh, but this one feels very organic throughout the game. The fact that you are placing those flags as you go, again, trying to design a golf course that makes sense. You're using those cubes, so at a glance you see, okay, that these I, I made two that are too hard, now I, or, or they're pretty hard, now I'm gonna uh, get a couple of other ones that are, that are shorter. Uh, you're gonna lose points somewhere, there are so many possible penalties that people can incur in that it's totally possible to lose points, and again, you're just trying to do your best. Uh, something is interesting though, at the beginning I was a little a little conflicted about the, the, the two people that are trying to hire you, the miss and the missus, uh, the mister and the miss, um, because, because they they didn't seem to really generate a lot of points. I was like, well, why don't I just grab people as I as as I go, people meaning tiles with, with the icon of people there, because those are just your points there is nothing to worry about that as opposed to well the, there's one that likes long long sections and, and you're gonna you're not gonna have a lot of those and they're kind of like you have to work for those because long often means more difficult not always but you have to work for those and maybe I'll be able to create three or three of those with a lot of work and that's six extra points and so it almost felt at the beginning like it was a lot of work for not much until 
until I realized that the game with people of similar skill can be very, very tight. Uh, one game I play with my daughter, who is now 12, uh, was one point different. Different. So actually working for, and that's at the time where I did that enormous or a lot of work uh, to please Mr. Long. And Mr. Long was very happy. And because of that, I won the game. So it turned out that when you have elements to score from so many sources, there seems to be an overall average. And so actually even being able to, if you're going to avoid the penalties, uh, be able to score uh, enough points from the people that are trying to hire you can make a difference. So even that aspect that I was a little bit skeptical about at the beginning uh, turned out to be to be good. And to me the game has enough enough interest, there's enough good stuff going on that I didn't feel the need to play the advanced version. But again, if you want to add a little more randomness there, a little more unpredictability, then the option is there. I played the game solo, it's very simple. You simply uh, completely neglect the, the selection of the tiles and you simply go and, and play and you receive tiles every turn and you choose one and you play. So it's definitely more of a strict puzzle. You lose that element, but it's a perfectly legitimate puzzle. Matter of fact, that other element um, only really matters some of the times. There may be times where I'm pretty sure about what I want, then I'm gonna look at your board and see if by getting what I want and can mess you up a little bit. Oh, there's really something you absolutely need two turns from now, so maybe I'm gonna pass now to make sure I'm gonna go first and take that tile then you're not gonna use. But it's not gonna be a major element. It's there if you want that element of indirect interaction, but what I'm trying to say is that you don't feel that you're missing a key element of the game if you play the game solo, and as you play it solo, it's a perfectly fun and legit puzzle, because ultimately, the puzzle, creating your display, creating your, your area, is what the game is about. Great variety with the outlines, they do play differently depending on the kind of grid that you have at the beginning, so although the script will overall be the same from game to game, there's enough internal variety, I think, to make the game highly replayable. So overall, I'm very happy, very pleased with Mini Golf Designer. I enjoyed it solo, I enjoyed it multiplayer, and so I happily recommend it to people that like um, tile lane games, or in general, people that want to have a nice challenge and a good puzzle to solve.